last session, uh, which is the opening keynote uh, session on Europe wide initiatives. Um, and I see um, we have Luca here uh, with us. I will take a, a few moments to introduce Luca and then uh, we will be ready uh, for, uh, for the presentation. Um, so, just a few uh, few moments. So uh, Luca is policy officer research and innovation uh, at uh, innovation on hydrogen uh, at European Commission. Um, he has been uh, um, with uh, in 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 different about <coughs> going through Luca's uh, biography. I found it very very interesting. Um, at uh, European Commission, he's currently co covering hydrogen research and innovation policy. Uh, prior to uh, that, between 2019 and 2021, he served as a diplomatic attaché for research and innovation in the Middle East. And uh, prior to that, he was also policy officer for Africa, the Gulf and neighborhood in DGRTD. Uh, during 2017-18, he was also policy assist assistant to the director of industrial technologies in the same DG after serving in the unit of nanotechnologies and advanced materials. Uh, before joining uh, the commission in 2016, Luca worked uh, at KAUST in Saudi Arabia, dealing with um, research policy and programming in the areas of energy materials and uh, water. Um, he's also been senior research policy and funding executive uh, in the EU Office of Scottish Enterprise, the Scottish Government Agency for um, Innovation. And uh, he has also been a lecturer and guest speaker on EU policies uh, in several uh, colleges and uh, universities. So as you can see, Luca comes with a lot of experience. Thank you so much uh, for taking time out this morning and uh, joining us. Uh, Luca, we are ready for your presentation. So over to you. Thank you very much, um, Narmita, and uh, thank you very much for this kind invitation. I'm uh, extremely pleased to accept and represent the European Commission. So a warm um, uh, good morning, welcome to all um, um, the attendees to this uh, to this conference. So um, uh, I would um, uh, um, kick off with the slides, if that's possible, um, uh, and um, uh, start my my presentation. So. Um, I um, joined, I mean, DG, DG Research and Innovation, I mean, some time ago and, and covered different portfolios. Um, uh, and um, in recently I joined the Clean Energy Transition Unit and specifically dealing with, with hydrogen. So one of the main um, uh, um, uh, responsibility uh, for me is to set up the new clean hydrogen joint undertaking that is taking over from the previous uh, fuel cell um, and um, hydrogen joint undertaking. So maybe we can have the slides so I can uh, start. Or yes, you want, you want me to run them? Um, um, as you prefer. My colleague yeah. is just starting to yeah. share. Ria, can we go full screen, please? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Excellent. So we can go straight to the next one. That is introducing um, the European strategy. So um, uh, I can see from the list of the attendees and uh, all the different presentations in the in the chat that um, you're real experts. I mean, in uh, um, uh, in the um, uh, research and innovation and deployment of hydrogen. So you must be already familiar with the European hydrogen strategy um, that was published in uh, 2020. Um, that is looking at hydrogen um, as an as a, as an opportunity to support the ambition of the European Green Deal and so progress towards climate neutrality by 2050. So um, hydrogen as a fuel stock, as a fuel, as a feedstock, as an energy carrier, um, as, a, as a storage opportunity. Um, so it's looking at hydrogen from a very holistic perspective. And um, um, we're extremely interested in the role that hydrogen can play um, uh, in the um, uh, transition to a clean, uh, um, a clean economy. Um, so the European strategy is giving us uh, three big milestones. Um, um, in by 2024, uh, um, we need to install at least six gigawatt um, um, uh, renewable hydrogen electrolyzers in Europe and produce uh, up to one million tons of hydrogen. So it's already a big. Um, a big target that we, we have ahead of us and um, we are progressing well. So we are increasing the um, capacity of the electrolyzer so far. Um, there is um, uh, um, a couple of uh, front running projects supported by the Green Deal call that we launched last year um, uh, to have 100 megawatt electrolyzers uh, um, uh, um, 
in a couple of years, and 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 this will continue um, uh, to bring the um, uh, the production capacity up. So um, the challenges is getting bigger when we look at the next decade. So by 2030, um, we aim to produce 10 million tons of renewable hydrogen in in Europe. And then by 2030, we should have um, a real renewable hydrogen deployed a large scale in, in, in Europe. So these are ambitious targets. Um, the Commission cannot do that alone. We can steer the process. We can support um, the injections of funding. We're developing now this new joint undertaking um, on, on hydrogen that is taking um, over from the previous one. And we'll have a specific focus on um, productions, storage and distribution. So let's say until now, the European Commission um, with the previous joint undertaking want to validate the use of hydrogen from an end user perspective and uh, the um, uh, outcome is that is currently working. So this first phase showed us that we can continue to invest in uh, um, the transition towards an hydrogen economy, but we need to dramatically scale up the amount of hydrogen produced uh, um, in, in Europe. So the targets are there, um, but we need um, a strong collaborations across all different member states. Many of them already issued their national strategies. So the joint uh, collaboration between the European Union and their member states, uh, um, the industries, research and academia is extremely key um, for a joint work towards uh, um, these, um, those ambitious goals. Um, there's a number of funding um, uh, instruments in Europe. Um, uh, I mentioned the Clean Hydrogen Partnership, but there's also the Connecting Europe facility that is providing um, um, a substantial amount of funding to support uh, the transition towards clean um, energy. Um, Innovation Fund also has a number of windows of opportunities to support hydrogen. And then we have the so-called um, uh, important projects of common European interest um, uh, that are um, supporting also hydrogen um, deployment. So we can go to the next slide. So this to show them in a nutshell that we're working at three different levels. So the European one, the national one, and also the, the, um, the regional one. So at the European level, we have the major um, funding instrument that is arise in Europe that kick off um, um, in 2020 and will run for another seven years. Um, and then under Horizon Europe, we have a number of specific initiatives in, uh, um, 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 to support um, uh, hydrogen. Clean hydrogen undertaking is one of those. So the uh, under why joint undertaking? Because it's bringing together the European Commission and the private sector across uh, Europe. And I'm sure that some of the uh, participants today are um, um, familiar with this and probably even members of the joint uh, undertaking. There is um, an interesting novelty there. Um, uh, we um, uh, increased uh, the um, uh, participation of stakeholders in the joint undertaking. Um, in fact, the new legal basis um, uh, that was approved last November is calling to have um, 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 more representatives from, uh, um, uh, um, from private stakeholders, uh, creating advisory bodies. So we have not only the state's representatives, and so representing the different member states, but we have also the stakeholders group representatives. So different um, organizations have been um, uh, um, uh, quite responsive to the call for expressions of interest. Um, the appointment happened um, a couple of weeks ago, and we had uh, um, two days ago the first meeting of this new group that is providing advice on where we're heading towards in um, the prioritization um, um, uh, in, uh, in, in the framework of the hydrogen research and innovation policy. This group will be going through region next year. So I will encourage you to stay tuned on that and apply and maybe um, uh, join this group when the new expressions of interest will be open uh, in one year from now. At the regional level, I was mentioning um, the strong connections between the Commission and the Member States. They're working together to, be able to develop a strategic research agenda on, on hydrogen. It will be presented soon um, 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 in, uh, in Germany, in, in Bonn, as an outcome of the discussions between the number of stakeholders um, involved in this, uh, in this process. Um, we're also supporting international cooperation in hydrogen through the Clean Hydrogen Mission 
as part of mission innovation and also involved in the um, um, IPHE and the Clean Energy Ministerials, mainly in, for uh, what concerns the standards um, and, and coding. The European Alliance on Hydrogen, um, I mentioned before, the European projects of important interest. These will be run through the um, Hydrogen Alliance um, that is bringing together um, the industrial, the main industrial players uh, uh, to design, to, to, to decide what would be the main pipelines of uh, a critical project that we should support um, uh, um, uh, um, through, um, um, through the European, uh, through the European funding mechanisms. And we have now a programmatic document that was published last, uh, last week, a staff working document of the European Commission that is listing all the different initiatives. It's trying to, um, uh, to pledge of the different initiatives and go in the same directions is giving some hints on where we should focus and, uh, and, 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 and where are the main barriers that need our attention. One of the novelty in the staff working document is the um, increased support to hydrogen valleys. Um, we know that there is a number of ready in Europe, so we um, are extremely committed to continue to support hydrogen valleys as, a, as, a, as an important tool to support the transition towards an hydrogen economy. And in the next call of the joint undertaking on hydrogen, there will be a specific um, um, call to, to um, support the development of the biggest and, and hydrogen valley ever in Europe, and also to develop a new hydrogen valley um, in areas in Europe there and have absolutely not at all hydrogen valleys. So we look at increasing the number of hydrogen valleys uh, all over Europe. So we can go to the next one. Thank you. So I already mentioned the joint undertaking. So um, um, a couple of words there. Um, uh, um, one of the novelty is to support uh, the deployment of hydrogen in synergy across the different partnerships. So we see hydrogen not in isolation, but obviously as part of a continuum where there is uh, um, uh, interest across different sectors. Now we have already a number of synergies in place with other partnership in the year of aviation, um, waterburn, um, railway and and uh, and um, and also clean steel. These are the other partnership that the European Union is supporting, and um, uh, the joint undertaking on hydrogen will be the only one producing um, uh, um, hydrogen, so producing um, um, renewable hydrogen. Um, but uh, um, hydrogen can be used in, in for uh, um, end users applications also across the other partnerships. So we're developing a building block approach. Um, um, and, and then the other partnership will take forward when it comes to a larger deployment and more end users application. So the next one, please. Right, so this is show um, how we are progressing uh, in the um, uh, development of the capacity of stacks um, and um, how we are growing the efficiency um, in terms of um, um, cost reductions and, and, and uh, um, um, uh, sales capacity. So we have even um, growing ambitions that are set by the Green Deal and the recent revisions of the fit for um, uh, 55. Um, uh, so we're looking at cells from the point of view of competitiveness, um, from energy security and sustainability. Um, and thanks to this approach, now we included the, um, 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 so the sustainability and the recycle by design approach upfront in the um, uh, strategic um, document of the joint undertaking that will inform the next seven years of priorities in hydrogen and to make sure that uh, costs will continue to go down, productions will go up and we ensure um, um, sustainability at the very beginning. So we are testing also the concept of increasing the number of pilot lines and then of testing facilities across Europe and this might come up in the, in, the next, um, in the next call. So we can go to the next slide. Right, so this is um, uh, specifically focusing on uh, achievements so far so to roll out hydrogen buses in, um, in Europe. Um, uh, so it's, um, it's, it's a reality now. 
it's, uh, it became commercial. Um, so you can see on, on the left of this slide that the costs for productions are going down. Now you can find um, uh, uh, um, adjutant buses around uh, um, 650,000 um, euros. Um, uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a consistent reduction of, of the cost. And therefore, the numbers of orders uh, um, for adjutant buses is growing also um, across, um, across Europe. Um, so, um, as you can see in the map there, um, uh, the main, there is a number of countries in Europe already uh, having deployed um, adjutant buses. So we have um, uh, the United Kingdom and, uh, and then and, uh, Scotland, um, the north of Italy, um, uh, Switzerland, um, uh, Belgium, um, the Netherlands and Germany, and also some of the Nordic countries in the Scandinavian Peninsula. So it's, uh, it's continuing to grow. Um, uh, it's important to mention that uh, we have more than 10 European um, uh, companies uh, um, that, that are producing the original equipment. So it's really a European um, uh, um, uh, business. Um, uh, in Europe already showed that uh, is, uh, is a front runner in terms of um, 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 electrolyzers and our production um, capacity. Um, we have so far, um, um, I think, uh, already in operations uh, um, around 300 uh, adjunct buses and 400 more will be put into um, operation in the next uh, in the next year. And altogether, we so achieved. Yeah, and altogether we achieved 13 um, 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 uh, um, million kilometers uh, since the beginning of the project. Um, uh, so um, uh, we we continue to invest in, in in this. We continue to invest in the opportunity to um, uh, um, support uh, um, bus hydrogen bus deployments across Europe. And thanks to the joint collaboration between the Commission, the member states, and the regional players, this is becoming a reality. So um, we have also another slide that is mainly um, um, uh, giving you some hints about um, uh, um, um, light vehicles in Europe. I will not go into details, but just put it there as a good um, uh, um, uh, benchmarking and comparisons uh, um, based on the bus. So um, um, in the bus sector, we had a strategic competitive advantage in Europe that we want to keep. Um, uh, in the light vehicles that we need to catch up on certain, uh, from a certain perspective, but um, um, uh, is still on, on our radar. And with that, um, I would like to, um, to conclude um, and thank again for the opportunity to present to the European strategy on, on hydrogen and, and thank to your involvement that we can show these amazing numbers uh, in terms of um, hydrogen bus deployments uh, across, um, across Europe. Um, I can see some questions in the chat about the consumers' profiles. Um, Luca, sorry, Luca, if it's okay, uh, can I read the questions out aloud for all our attendees who may not be reading uh, the, the chat box? And I have some questions that I've received separately as well. So I'm going to put forward all of these questions uh, to you. Uh, so first of all, thank you very much for that very interesting uh, presentation and uh, sharing all the details of what's coming up and, and what's happened so far where hydrogen for uh, transit is concerned. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, the first question is from uh, Martin and Martin is, is uh, represents WSP, uh, he's joined us from the UK. Uh, his question is, does the EC plan to develop a standard for hydrogen bus performance and specification, similar to the Euro emissions standard for internal combustion engines to drive quality improvements and rationalize design between manufacturers? Um, he says this could also help lower costs. So I think interesting uh, and a valid question there, uh, but does the EC have a plan to um, develop a standard for hydrogen buses performance and specifications? Okay, right. Thank you for this question, um, Martin. So the Director General that is looking at um, Sanders is the, is the Joint Research Centre. So we are more in the hands of our colleagues uh, from the Joint Research Centre when it comes to standards. And only recently, I, I was appointed to, appointed to the, um, uh, um, uh, the working group with uh, um, uh, the um, uh, um, um, uh, International en Energy Agency uh, to look at standards. So I'm, um, I'm afraid that I need to um, uh, get back to you on that um, to make sure that I can provide you the right answer. So I will reach out to my colleagues in the joint undertaking, in the joint um, research center to make sure that uh, um, uh, um, uh, these messages pass through. Um, uh, to the best of my knowledge, 
there is an interest in going in that direction. Um, uh, but as you know, we just got to the point of the gas package and um, we're still adjusting uh, on uh, what that means in terms of practical rollout. So um, uh, in order to progress in that direction, uh, I need to double check uh, before with uh, the Joint Research Center. Okay. Uh, there's a related question to that, uh, Luca, um, and this is about standardization of stacks. Uh, so will that, are, is, is you looking at, uh, is he looking at that as well, standardization of stacks and standard modules of stacks? Yes, so this is uh, this is um, uh, this is on our, on our radar at the moment, and uh, in the next work program of the clean hydrogen joint undertaking, there will be at least uh, um, uh, fifteen um, uh, specific calls, uh, uh, fifteen specific topics that are looking at um, uh, standards and coding. So um, this is this is um, uh, growing. There's a growing interest in in, in that, and um, and definitely stay tuned. And uh, the publication of the new calls uh, is seen for the first of March and um, and and then there will be two cutoff dates so one in spring and one in November and we are um, 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 powering these calls with 300 million investment in um, over the next year okay, thank you uh, the next question is uh, about the consumer profile. Uh, so do you have a guess of what are the consumers? What is their profile uh, for um, applications of the one empty of renewable hydrogen to be made available across Europe by 2024? Yes, indeed. Um, so um, we know that we need huge quantity of, of hydrogen if you really want to transition to an hydrogen economy, but uh, um, uh, we need to understand better also where this hydrogen can be produced and where it can be used. So that's why we're focusing on the hydrogen valleys approach, because we believe that in the hydrogen valley, we have the entire value chain there. So from the um, industrial plant, um, that probably will be the more um, added intensive consumer um, in the valley, but then we have uh, also links between the different transport sectors in the valley, then possible housing and uh, um, um, and storage um, and storage facilities. So, in the context of the valley, will be uh, will make sense and um, to have these ambitious targets of productions and consumption in in the valley dimension. Um, uh, in order to um, make sure we can uh, we can uh, um, fully take the opportunity to continue to increase the um, the amount of hydrogen produced and uh, decarbonize all the hard to abate sectors, we want to create uh, um, let's say clean hydrogen corridors between the valleys. So the next step will be to have a cross um, regional valleys or cross national hydrogen valleys that are interlinked and then have um, corridors between these groups of valleys across Europe. Okay, understood. Thank you. Um, Ray has, has, has another question. Uh, has the EU strategy considered the environmental resources available from individual member states to produce the variant colors of hydrogen and what will work best for each state in terms of funding supports for those different, different shades? Right. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Rai, uh, for your question. So, um, as you know, the joint undertaking on clean hydrogen is specifically focusing on the productions of um, renewable hydrogen, so only from renewable sources, so the green hydrogen, basically. However, the um, uh, European strategy of hydrogen is looking also at blue carbon hydrogen. So that's where the different colors might come into the picture. So blue hydrogen is still part of the European hydrogen strategy. So we do not have to um, um, make a confusion between the two. So from the research and innovation perspective, we inject money to produce green hydrogen, even though we can have different um, types, of uh, different colors of hydrogen for end user applications. So in this case, there is no issue because, well, at the end of the day, when hydrogen is produced, it's hydrogen. But the source of production is important when it comes to the production that's supported by RNI. When it comes to end uses applications and testing of uh, certain applications, hydrogen can have different color codes. This is from the RNI perspective. In terms of European strategy, the blue hydrogen is part of the picture. So the member states can uh, continue to invest and produce um, low carbon hydrogen, whatever the source is, uh, to meet these ambitious goals. And are encouraged the member states to keep going with their national strategy strategies in order to do that. 
and you know recently there has been lots of controversial issues with the new taxonomy um, about um, um, uh, um, what's renewable, what's not, and therefore um, we might have um, uh, um, uh, a new a new approach to hydrogen productions when it comes to um, the, the different color codes. But this might be for the future. But at the moment, we keep the two things separated. So the European Commission support and the member state dimension. But the two are part of the same strategy. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's another question that has come, and I think um, um, uh, very relevant for the audience uh, that has joined today. Uh, can you throw some light on the revision of the Alternative Fuels Directive? Uh, can you can you throw some light on on the revision? Well, I mean, uh, the, the, the 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 you know that the, the, the um, uh, well, the gas package was issued just before the um, uh, before the break. So now we're going we are going forward, and as part of the fit um, uh, fit for, for for 55, we will be also working on 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 these revisions. But uh, the bulk of the um, of this will be managed by the Director General for Energy, where it comes um, um, all the regulatory aspects uh, linked to that. So um, uh, there's a lot of, of discussion. Things are under, I mean, embargo for, for, for a number of reasons, but it would mainly my colleagues from DG um, Energy that should be um, uh, um, address this, uh, this question. Basically. So from our, an RNI perspective, I prefer to stay on the um, uh, RNI dimension. Okay. Um, Michael is, is asking, is there a plan for a dense network of gas stations for hydrogen in Europe in the next uh, few years? Uh, sorry, uh, there was um, an, a sound issue. Is there? Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Um, is there a plan for a dense network of gas stations for hydrogen in Europe in the next few years? Uh, Michael is asking this question. Yes, we're looking at infrastructures and um, and there's already, um, uh, um, well, there's already a good, um, uh, let's say, infrastructure in, uh, um, um, uh, that is, well, a lot need to be done there, but we already have some backbones. So uh, you, you, you can see in one of the slides that, that I put the map of all the different uh, um, gas stations available. Now, the question is that we need to continue to um, increase the, the stations in this map, because so far there's entire parts of Europe, like in the south, uh, after the north of Italy, and in, in, the, in, in, the, um, in the east, uh, that there's, a, there's a, a, a lock of, of stations, so there's some limitations there. So the infrastructure dimension need to be um, addressed. There are certain calls in the new um, uh, work program that are looking at also um, uh, repurposing and, uh, and, and, and use of uh, um, an already existing infrastructure. So let, let's see how, how it develops, but definitely the um, increase of the infrastructures and at the different pressure is also important because in the new program, you will see that there is a strong focus on heavy duty vehicles. So we, um, we support that. And and, and as part of that, there will be an increase on the infrastructures uh, to make sure that this is happening. But what we're trying to fight is to have at the same place the different pressure options so that uh, interoperability will be ensured independently from the vehicles. So we're not there yet, but uh, we are pushing in that direction. Thank you. Uh, there's, a, there's an interesting, very broad question. Uh, when we talk about new technologies and innovations, what innovations are you looking forward to in this space? And uh, what innovations would you expect from the industry? Okay, right. So as you know, we're not starting from scratch. I mean, the um, Europe is leading in uh, electrolyzer technology, so we continue to invest uh, in electrolyzers. But new technologies are emerging. And so we need to look at the future as well, because if you want to keep our position in the next 10, 15, 20 years, we need to continue to invest also in new technologies and see what potential is there. So um, uh, there's the opportunity to do that. Where is this focus continue to be on electrolyzers? There will be opportunity to support also new, um, uh, new technologies um, on a lower scale, but it's going to be there. And we are eager to hear more from industry there, because if the industry believe that there is extremely promising technologies that need European support, then maybe we can address this through um, Horizon Europe rather than the clean hydrogen joint undertaking, because we have still um, um, an entire um, uh, um, 
a cluster, so the um, uh, cluster five in Horizon Europe that is looking at renewable energy and hydrogen could be part also of the cluster five if there is gaps specifically in the area of new technology. So please let us know, be in touch and, uh, and, 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 and bring forward ideas uh, if new technologies work worthwhile being um, supported because then we can use uh, Horizon Europe to do that. Right, right. Um, what, in your view, are some of the long pending issues and challenges uh, that are that are impacting this this uh, segment? Um, well, we had a number of discussions about challenges, and um, so basically, um, uh, we um, believe that we need uh, more um, clear rules and regulatory framework there. So mm -hmm. these proved to be a bottleneck so far. So we need to certainly address um, address this. Um, we need also to increase funding on safety because uh, these mass um, um, productions of hydrogen that we're looking at uh, that need to be stored. So storage and distribution and safety are also challenges that, that need to be um, that need looked at. Also, um, um, uh, the, the, the concept of the valleys and the corridors will imply also the transport of um, of um, of hydrogen, big quantities of hydrogen. So, there the, the, the have to be a clear rules in order to make sure that we can um, create an hydrogen market in uh, in Europe. So, um, uh, continue to support funding. So, continue to invest, but look at a regulatory framework uh, um, uh, there and possibly de develop innovation principles that might lead to new legislation in the future to prepare the, um, the ground for an hydrogen economy in Europe. Okay. Uh, final question uh, for you, Luca. Uh, what are your uh, uh, top priorities uh, when you look at uh, 2022? Uh, if you can list your top three priorities or uh, your, your division's uh, top three priorities? Oh, okay, right. So for our for 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 us, we have three top priorities. So the 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 first one is uh, to um, um, uh, um, increase the capacity of the electrolyzers and reduce cost. So this is uh, um, the big one. So the second um, top priority will be um, uh, to support hydrogen valleys in Europe. So the deployment of the hydrogen valleys, so where we have the production, the distribution, the uh, storage and the end user application in the same ecosystem. And the valleys can be short, can be small, can be large, and then we create corridors between those valleys. So this is second big priority. And the third one is to create the right synergies across the different partnerships. So um, create the building blocks for aviation and give that aviation the possibility to really make hydrogen an opportunity for the future. So the synergies will be um, the third main priority. Great, great. Thank you so much, Luca. On that note, I'm going to bring this session to a